Good morning. Happy Tuesday. It's Sue with the Gratitude Cafe. Good morning, Benny. Morning, Sue. How are you? I'm very well. How is uh, the Pacific Northwest in your neck of the woods? Oh, it's wet. Yeah, gray and wet. Down there. Yeah, yeah, I know. We're trying to, you know, stay afloat up here. (laughs) Well, are you going to ask me what it's like here? You wouldn't let me. You know, sometimes you should just let me try. (laughs) Sometimes you should just let me try, Sue. I can do it too. I'm a big boy. Big boy with big boy. Sue, how's it going in your neighborhood? <laughs> it's sunny. It's beautiful. It's actually warm, like 55, but sunny. Someone's got to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Although, <laughs> you know, I hear from Lexi in Arizona going to college and she's like, it's 90 here. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm okay with that in February. I'm not ready for that yet. Oh, I like where we are. Oh, I'm so ready for some sunshine. I love it. You are. You're a sunny baby. I do. I love that warmth for sure. And I didn't realize how much I loved it. I, you know, I spent over 40 years up in Seattle and then coming to Bend 90% of the time it's sunny, regardless if it's snowing or not. It's just, it's amazing and magical. Uh And I love it. All right. So enough with the weather (laughs) and enough with gray and sun and all of that. We are here to inspire you, love on you. I have a guest, a special guest like I do every week, and there's a doctor in the house. And we are going to have an in-depth conversation. And quite honestly, it's, it's the whole health method and healing. And you guys know that's everything that I promote, talk about, preach, and uh, offer, encourage, pushing your buttons like a lot for whole health, mental health, physical, mental, spiritual, all that energetic, all that juicy stuff, you know, it's swimming in the quantum soup, so to speak. And again, you guys know this new perspective, new thoughts, new ideas, and it's a new you, you take what resonates and then leave the rest. And quite honestly, if there's a you know squeaky wheel or a thorn that you're like, mm, something got you, that's probably what you really need to focus on. So let's just sit back, enjoy your coffee. If you're in the car driving, be safe, take a deep breath, enjoy our conversation for the next hour. And uh, if you want a copy of the show, if you'd like to join us with the newsletter, please do that. Go to claritywithsue.com. Again, claritywithsue.com forward slash newsletter. You can just go to claritywithsue.com and you'll get all the links and information. And of course, if you want a copy of the show or if we're sharing any of those links, you'll need to go to claritywithsue.com as well and social media, all that. All right. We have a doctor in the house. We have Dr. Mark Halpin. He's a chiropractor, author, lecturer, and certified heart math practitioner. He is also certified in additional healing modalities, psyche, and Hopo Ono, in both his personal and professional life, Dr. Mark has been drawn to methods that promote optimal health and healing of the brain, body, and spirit. You're speaking my language, doctor. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, where do you want to start? I mean, I, I can do the total formal bio, but you know what? Let's get to know your energy and... Sure. All of that. And I'm heart mass certified too. So of course we're having this conversation. I love this work, right? All right, you go. Well, I am I am here basically because I started the coherence revolution to help people perhaps not go through the challenges that I went through uh, growing up and into my, uh, you know, early adult years of just dealing with anxiety and stress and, you know, how that impacts our life. And I feel that most people at this point are a little overwhelmed with what's going on today. We've got everything from war and pandemic and uncertainty. And it's just time that we actually start having a fundamentally new way of looking at our day-to-day life uh, and creating a life that we can uh, still be inspired and still feel grateful on a daily basis. Agreed, totally. And how do we get there? I mean, this is the conversation I have with my guests and my audience and even just walking outside. Like, Sue, how do you keep that mindset? I mean, what do you mean? Don't you watch the news? And I'm like, yeah, no, I don't. I don't, because you know, you, you focus on the things and my energy and where I hold, that's really important to me. So let's talk to the audience about, let's, uh, what I'd like to do is, 
your backstory because of your why. Yes, you had health, but let's walk through that from your side, right? Sure. And so the audience can really get sure. you. Yeah. So my story sort of started as a teenager. I, I would say I grew up um, as a kid with, I had a loving family. I had lots of friends. There was nothing on the surface that anybody would have said, wow, this, this kid is you know, developing some mental uh, health challenges. But somewhere in my 12, 13, 14 years of age, somewhere in there, uh, the normal sort of teenage angst started to get me. And I just developed some really poor thinking habits. My, my mind would ruminate. I started developing anxiety. And as, in, as a teenager in the early 80s and mid 80s, I had no idea who to turn to. My parents really weren't a source that you would talk to about this at that point, And friends really weren't. So I really kept it to myself until I was maybe 18, 19, 20, which is when I really started what I call my never ending search for answers. You know, I tried everything and everything because, you know, part of me was this spiritual kid and part of this was the science kid who was learning and, and did well in school. And I had sort of both sides of myself, which really I wanted to approach this. And my attitude was, I'm going to figure out what is causing this anxiety. I'm going to get rid of it. And then I'm going to live this great life, you know? And so it was always this, I'll wait until I get there and it's, I'm going to eventually find the answer. But then I would try something and it would work maybe a little bit. And then a few weeks later, I'd say, oh, that really wasn't the answer. And then I'd try the next thing. And then I'd have hope. And then I'd feel like, oh, this is the answer. And, you know, I'd see a new therapist or I'd try a new medication or I'd try a new course or I'd read a new book. I'd go to a new energy therapist. I tried homeopathy, naturopathy, energy work. I tried shamans. I mean, you name it. I did it, uh, you know, from cognitive behavioral to every type of psychotherapy I and mean, all of it. And I always had a little bit of relief and then I'd be back to the drawing board. And I kept thinking, what is, you know, am I ever going to get there? That's and pretty I, normal, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. You, yeah, you're like, you think that you found the, the, the it, right? Yes. And you're like, oh, you're so excited and you're jazzed up and you're elevated. And then it's like, ah, shiitake, right? That's right. <laughs> yes, it's please it. continue. But yeah. so many people will totally resonate with exactly what you're saying. And it got to the point where, A, I had spent thousands of dollars and endless amounts of time. My life became about how do I deal with anxiety? How do I get out of this state? This fight or flight was always always with me. And so uh, I did have some successes, you know, back around 2005, that's when I was introduced to heart math, which is the technique that I I'm certified in, which uses breath work and, and your ability to change your emotional state. And I started, you know, doing certain courses. And then eventually uh, I started doing some meditation with a doctor named Dr. Joe Dispenza and some of his work, which was really phenomenal. And, you know, things started to come together, not until really my forties, uh, you know, I turned 50 last year and, and it had started to coming together maybe a few years prior. But really what happened is during the pandemic, uh, I'm a chiropractor. I've been a chiropractor for over 25 years. And during the pandemic, I remember it was March 15th of 2020. We were essentially set, told, go home and we're quarantining you. And we don't know for how long. And I knew with my background, this probably wouldn't be the greatest thing for me to just sit around twiddling my thumbs. And so I thought, I'm going to start writing. And I didn't even really know what I was writing, but I treated it like a job. And I started writing in the morning and in the afternoon. And I wrote about everything that i had ever done for stress and anxiety. And it was my time to revisit everything. So all the books that I had, you know, folded over a page years before, I finally went back and reviewed those books. And I reviewed the courses and I looked at what therapists had told me. And I basically came up with this whole process uh, which is the, the basis of the book Coherence Revolution. And my approach was to tell people what didn't work, what did work, and really help people um, figure out what will work for them. I, I looked at how we can use our senses and the world around us to try to change our physiological state. I looked at how we could use our breath, how we could use nature, how we could use sight, sound, taste, digestion, all of this stuff. And what would work for me? So I did the self-inquiry, you know, what does work? If I taste this, what happens? If I smell that, what happens? If I listen to this, what happens? And I sort of went through the self-inquiry and that's how I put together the course, which is Coherence Revolution, which is really a deep dive for people to learn not only these heart math techniques, but learn what works for them to dive into each of their senses, to have a toolbox so that ultimately they can design a life where they understand what they're trying to achieve on a daily basis, the things that inspire them, and put together what I call a daily 
uh, process. Because if you look around, most people have what I call a destination mindset. And we might hear it in the story, which I call the I'll be happy when story. You know, I'll be happy when I finally get to school, when I finally get my first boyfriend, girlfriend, when I graduate, when I get my first car, when I, you know, get married, when I have kids, when I finally get a house. It's always I'll be happy when. And all of a sudden you're 50 and you're 60 and you're 70 and you've been saying I'll be happy when for 30 or 40 years. Well, when is it time to be happy? So I designed what I call a, a process mindset. I want people to design a daily process that if they engage in it and they engage in the process, it will keep them involved in life. It'll keep them inspired and keep them enjoying their life and accomplishing, but they're not so set on the destination. It's more about just getting up every day and engaging in life. And therefore, if you actually fall off track, you don't have to get back to anywhere. You just have to get back to doing your process and what worked for you. Uh, and so that's really the, you know, how all of this started. I love that. And you're talking to somebody that has spent well over, well, I've been doing radio for over 12 years, but 20 plus years of research and development for the same reason, all of my, my healing journey has been the internals, you know, the mind, the body, self-regulating, getting over my shiitake, you know, and, and being able to self-regulate in that moment. you know, so many people don't have the time to sit and meditate. And, and we're on the same path because I traveled for three years with Dr. Joe Dispenza and was one of his team leaders and activity leaders. Oh, wonderful. And it was an amazing gift. And like you, his tools provided so much healing and, and the nerdy stuff, the science behind it too, yes. that neurological pathway. And I'm going to get to this and, and I've done energy modalities and, and all of that. And I get it. And I think all of it is important, whatever resonates and works for you, put that hat on, but going back to the science of it, knowing, and I've seen miraculous healings in, in, I mean, you, you've, Yes. Done Dr. Joe's work, you know, you've seen, yeah. I, mean, I spent three years witnessing and, and participating and engaging in this and where I'm going, my healing started with him over 13 years ago. But when I saw a video of the neural pathways, when you change your habit and then they fire and wire a different way, that's what got me because then I had something tactile that said, because I didn't have something on my arm that I'm watching go away. Like we've seen in, in heat, miraculous healings but it was a neurological thing. So it was tactile. So I would put that in my habituation, in my memory, in my bank to say, you're changing girl, you're changing. It's okay. It's so good. Right. Well, my, my breakthrough did happen at a Dr. Joe and it was, I was sitting there, I did a couple of three days and then I did a bunch of week longs. And uh -huh. in, my, in my first three days, I remember it was in Philadelphia in the, in the uh, fall of 2016 and he said something about anxiety being an addiction. And he explained this concept of when you think a thought, you produce a stress chemical and that chemical produces this feeling of anxiety. And then that feeling of anxiety produces more chemicals, which produces more thoughts, which produces more chemicals. And this just keeps being a neurological pattern. And once I, I remember sitting in the audience going, no wonder it always seems like I'm anxious about something. It's this addiction. My body's literally craving the hormones of stress. And once I understood that it was this addiction, once you understand that it's a neurological program, then you go, oh, well, maybe the issue wasn't the real thing. It's just this pattern we have to break. And then it became less about solving a problem and more about how do I change my neurological patterns? How can I start to practice the chemicals of joy? How can I start to produce the chemicals of joy in my body and, and now start to counteract the patterns that I had created? And this is where the coherence revolution sort of stems is in every moment, I look at things as either depleting you or renewing you. Yep. And if something's depleting you, even if it's small, but it's happening over and over and over and over again, well, by the end of the day, those depletions really leave you empty. And so if you're always doing things that renew you, that uplift you, now you're doing the opposite. You're creating the, these empowering chemicals. And so I started to, you know, this is where heart math comes in. I was really uh, joyful that I had started heart math probably five to 10 years before Dr. Joe, 
But at that same place, I remember sitting in the audience and then he started to talk about heart math and the scientists that were doing research with him. And I thought, wow, aren't my, all my worlds coming together? In this <laughs> I love it. And now all of a sudden I'm like, wow, no wonder I was into heart math and all this stuff started to make sense and how the brain and the heart can get entrained. And I thought, wow, okay, I can start to really function with this stuff. And well, wait, so, let's, let's talk about that, Dr. Mark, yeah. because the, or the heart has, what was it? It's 40,000 neurons. Uh, well, the, the, the only, the only um, I guess, stat that I remember picked up very strongly was that the heart's electric signal is about 40 times stronger than the brain's. Uh, and because the heart's electrical signal is 40 times stronger than the brain's, you entrain the brain to the heart's frequency. And once you start doing that, you affect the higher centers of the brain that deal with decision-making, pain, sleep, stress. And so now if you can start to regulate the rhythm of your heart through your breath, and through the use of emotion, you can start to affect the higher centers of the brain. And to me, that made a lot of sense. And they talk, heart math talks about a concept called heart rate uh, variability. And if you look at most people, they are chest breathers. And what they're doing is they heave upwards. And when they do that, the lungs are actually compressed. They move up and they yeah. get smaller. Yeah. In, in and of itself, if I put a heart sensor on someone and I see this jagged heart rhythm and there's very short in-breath and out-breath, I know they're a chest breather and I know they're stimulating the sympathetic system, which is fight or flight or stress. So if you can start to become a stomach breather and filling up your stomach and let your diaphragm drop down and the lungs expand, now you're filling up your lungs and you're actually stimulating on your outbreath more. You can elongate that outbreath and stimulate the parasympathetic system, which is the relaxation system. And so what heart math has done is they've, uh, they've designed a way to actually increase what's called your heart rate variability. So when you breathe in, your heart rate goes up. And when you breathe out, your heart rate goes down. The difference is called your heart rate variability. So let's say you breathe in and you, your heart rate goes up to 90. And then you breathe out when your heart rate goes all the way down to 70. 90 minus 70 is 20. Well, your heart rate variability is 20. Well, those chest breathers I was talking about have a heart rate variability of two, three, four, maybe five. We want it to be 15 to 20 because what studies have shown is the greater your HRV, the greater uh, heart rate variability, the more adaptable you are to life, the more adaptable you are to the world around Let's you. Let's break that down, Dr. Mark. Let's break that down yes. because people are like, what do you mean adaptable? Let's go to their triggers. Let's go to their fight or flight. to life. Yes. Yeah. You are more resilient. You're more able to break that pattern of stress. You're more able to control your physiological state in the, in the moment. You have a greater ability to take, take back the control. And so the idea is that you can train yourself to increase your heart rate variability. And so by doing heart math, heart, uh, heart math techniques, there's, there's various ones, you can start to not only change your emotional state, but increase your heart rate variability, which will affect not only your, your uh, ability to live a more adaptable life, but you'll live longer because what studies show is during our life, HRV will shorten, which shortens our life. But if we can increase our HRV, we can start to increase our lifespan. So I think it's pretty cool that you're working from uh, from your just your breath. You can start to change your entire physiological state. And right there, magic. You guys, listen, if you're looking for the magic button, I mean, come on. It's right here, right in your own body, this beautiful vessel of your own humanity. And it's free. It's free. You have to have the will. You have to have the gumption the accountability and the responsibility to have that within yourself. And it's the breath, you guys, that's, I mean, if you take away anything from this conversation, <laughs> do the breath. And you know what I used to do, Dr. Mark, or I still do, um, talking about the breath work, especially with kids, because you, you see that they don't have that, they don't quite have that training. So what that's I right. do is I, I put them on their bellies and we make a toy or a game out of it. And I'm like, all right, take nice deep breaths. I want to see you guys wiggling on your, your popped up belly. And they yes, love it. Right. And then they giggle and more oxygen and all the good, good hormones are released. I, I find it amazing. I, in my practice, I'll sometimes be talking about breath work with people and I'll have people put a hand on their upper chest and a hand on their belly. And what the instruction is really to leave the, the upper one just still and try to fill up your belly. And the amount of adults that it's like a dyslexia. Like they literally cannot fill up their belly on their in-breath. They're 
They just, they just can't figure it out. There's no, they don't have a neural pathway for it. Right. There's nothing there. And so now you've got to start training people to just slowly fill up their stomach and you realize, wow, they've been breathing wrong their entire life. Uh, And so this is a really powerful tool for people. If they've never really just become stomach breathers, as you're saying, forget about all the other fancy techniques. If you just learn to breathe properly, you can change your physiological state. Well, that you can do that and you can get your, yourself down. You can get it back to homeostasis. And then, then you have the capacity. Then you have the wherewithal to be able to step into other modalities, other conversations, you know, your stress, your anxiety. I mean, guys, ask yourself the question. Do you want to stay in stress? Do you want to stay agitated? Give me some other adjectives that describe anxiety and stress, because it's important that we shine the light on that. So they then can make the awareness and purposeful choice to go to the other side. Right. Yeah. Yeah, It's overwhelm. It's uncertainty. It's, it's just feeling, you know, the weight of the world on your shoulders at all times. And and, and it seems to be, you know, getting worse. You know, I look at uh, 20, 30 years ago and we used to idolize the doctor who, was out on the golf course at two in the afternoon and you used to go, wow, look at the lifestyle they've set up for themselves. They've got all this time. Fast forward 30 years. Now that person's lazy. The people we look up to are the people that accomplish more and more and more and more. And so really now it's all about doing more. And we've forgotten about a lifestyle. We've forgotten about putting things in that inspire us on a daily basis. You know, the little things that stress us out all day, we don't have, we don't even have the energy to read for 20 minutes at the end of the day. It's, ah, I'm too tired because you're just so depleted. Uh, but if you're doing things throughout the day to keep your uh, emotional, um, uh, your emotions uplifted, that's the difference between saying, yeah, I'll meet you for a coffee later. And let, let's go for that chat rather than, oh, I got to cancel again. I'm just wiped. The idea is that your emotions are so depleting through the day. You don't have energy for anything else. Well, Dr. Yes, I just, I hands down, speak in my language, Dr. Mark, let's put a pin and unpack what you were talking about. We were talking about because I still find myself, Sue, it's okay. You don't have to keep going and going and going. Mind you, you know, and, and I can speak to the stress and the anxiety and, and I'm using these as adjectives to describe. I don't have an emotional charge to them anymore. I just don't. Post-traumatic stress. I gave it an adjective because I, there wasn't that in the eighties when I was going through my stuff, whatever that was. Right. But there were some pretty profound traumas. I mean, I know that, and it made me who I am, but where I'm going with this is I still battle internally and physiologically. I'm like, Oh, I got to be doing or something. And I've raised kids and I was a mom for 22 years raising, you know, go, 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 go where I'm going with this and putting the pin in to help where, where, you know, our, our listeners, what can I do in that moment? I mean, we gave them a beautiful tool about breath because you have to get your body and chemicals back to homeostasis. And if I am so addicted to those chemicals and I'm going to be like, no, I'm going to keep going, you know, cause we do that too. And yeah. just one And, you know, over the last year, there's been like this big, huge permission slip for everybody. It's okay. You know what? And I think part COVID did that, you know, the big vid thing. Everybody had to just go, whoa, wait a minute. And they didn't know what to do. We were just talking about that anxiety and that stress and that thinking and feeling. And yeah, I need to take a deep breath. I'm so excited. (laughs) You know, I I think the first thing is um, it always comes back to awareness because the first thing is to say, I'm not okay in this moment, or my mind's racing, or I'm sitting here, I've got hours and I don't want to be doing work, but I feel like if I'm not accomplishing something, something's wrong. And you've got to stop, take a break and go, whoa. Then it comes back to that addiction in my, in my opinion. In other words, you've got to say to yourself, okay, I do, I'm stressed out about this, or I'm feeling this urge that I've got to keep going question that. Well, is that really the truth or is that really just my my neurological pattern? And as soon as you can say to yourself, no, 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 this is just my pattern. There's nothing urgent right now. There's nothing I'm missing out on. As soon as that happens, then you have to do something to get more coherent or balanced. So for me, I I call in the book, I call it fight or flight Zen. In other words, because I was anxious so often, I started to listen to that voice inside my head that would say, Hey, your, your anxiety just increased because your blood sugar went down, go eat something. 
Or, you know what, I know that you're anxious, but you've got to work in two hours. Get in the shower. You know that when you get in the shower, you're going to change everything up. Or go listen to this song or go call this person or go play the guitar. Something. And I call it a neurological interruption. Yes. Uh, It's a neurological interrupt. You might have even seen people with elastics on their wrists and they snap them. It can be something as drastic as that or something short, or it can be you've got that person you know that can make you laugh or you know that song that can make you feel uplifted. But you've got to have a toolbox of things that when you are in the moment and you've recognized, you know what, I'm doing it again. My brain's going through that pattern or I'm feeling uncomfortable or I'm stressed. You've got to have a toolbox of things that you know in the moment, ah, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to try to make a decision. I'm not going to try to come up with a solution. I'm not going to try and solve a problem. I have to first get more balanced and more coherent in my life. Mm -hmm. Then I can relook at the situation and go, oh, it wasn't so bad. And so often I'll listen to a song, play guitar for a minute. And then I'll, after I'll play the guitar, I'll put it down. I'll go, okay, what was I worried about? Yeah, it doesn't seem as bad anymore. I've got a new solution for it. Because you cannot make a good decision when you're in a fight or flight or stressed uh, mode. Your body's literally not made for that. You see, when you're in that situation, as most of us know, fight or flight means that your body's in uh, alarm. It's trying to get away from something. But thousands of years ago, it was because you were supposed to get away from a bear and you were being chased into the woods. So literally, the blood flow is being shunted away from your digestive system, from your immune system, from your uh, cardio, um, not your cardiovascular system, but your reproductive system, all of the other stuff so that all of the blood flow is going to your muscles so you can get away from the bear. But that means that you're not digesting food well, your immune system's not fighting well, you're not, your reproductive system's not working. And that used to be very short lived. But now, now we're getting into that because our spouse uh, said something to us. Our friends did something. Our boss did something. We've got some issue with our kids. On top of already being triggered and fired up, you yes. know, whether it's coffee or energy drinks or yes. lack of sleep or yes. it's again, going to the whole body health, right? Yes. Well, I mean, you look at also, I mean, even things like Facebook, which I'm, you know, guilty of too. You know, there's a few things. One is as you're doing it, you're releasing dopamine. Uh, yeah. Dopamine is, so it's like an addictive thing. No wonder you can't pull your eyes away from it. You're, you're literally addicted to it. But it's also our eyes were never meant, uh, you know, from a a developmental process, our eyes are supposed to read horizontally. All of a sudden, the last decade, we're scrolling everything up and down. That is affecting our brains. It's affecting our stress levels, affecting the way we process information in the brain. It's no wonder we've got a whole, you know, generation of kids who can't focus on anything. We're scrolling, you know, really quickly through things. So, you know, we don't have all the answers. A lot of research still has to be done on this. But the basic fact is you've got to stop when you're feeling these emotions and say, what can I do to change it? Is it true? You said, and I use that all the time. I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. You're tired. It's okay to be tired. Just give yourself a few minutes, do a power snooze, get in the shower, whatever you need to do to recalibrate. Number one was the breath work. All right, guys, Sue here with the Gratitude Cafe. You can go to claritywithsue.com to get a copy of the show, get the newsletter, all that. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We're live on YouTube still, and uh, you can join us over there if you'd like and see us goofing off in studio and in our own personal spaces, all that fun stuff and the conversation. So you can go to YouTube and just type in 1150 AM and you'll see us there. All right, we'll be right back, you guys. All right. All clear. Yay. All right, YouTubers, what I am hearing, and it's about changing your emotional state. Dr. Mark was talking about stress, anxiety, overwhelm. Check in, ask your, ask yourself, ask those questions. And everything that I teach Dr. Mark is that awareness. You have to start with the awareness, denial, avoidance, busy, this busy, that busy doing nothing, you know, right. We've, we're all there workaholics, aholics of something yeah. to avoid feeling going within. And then all of a sudden adrenal failure or something has happened. Your body has been telling you that something's going on for a while. So what I'm hearing from 
Dr. Mark, it's the stress and the anxiety and the overwhelm. So ask yourself those questions and to be able to change your emotional state. And that's what you're doing in your online program. And the it's the coherence. Rev, what's the actual coherence, re, coherence revolution? It's a revolution on online program uh, where we get. We, I mean, we have we, we literally practice emotion. We go into breakout rooms. We have different scenarios. And the idea is that I have people identify the emotions that they want to feel in their future. So, you know, how you, you remember something in the past and when you go through a visualization of it, your brain doesn't recognize whether it actually is still occurring or whether it was a memory because your brain's going through it all over again. Well, you can do the same thing for the future. If you start to future pace the emotions you want to feel when you wake up in the morning, at lunch, in the evening, when you're with friends, when you're with your loved ones, you start to write down the emotions that you'd like to feel. Then you can start to literally practice the emotions of your future. And as you practice the emotions of your future, your brain's not going to know the difference of whether the future is happening now or not. So as you're doing it, you're literally practicing the emotions of your future and they become more familiar to you. And as they become more familiar to you, you start to live the dream life that you always wanted to live. Love that, Dr. Mark. And you're totally speaking my language. I would also like to do a little disclaimer caveat too. Your nervous system, your brain, your body is going to call a BS too that says, ah, that didn't quite align or feel right. So you've got to language it in a matter that aligns and, and resonates with back. you and build on that. So we're going to take, we're coming back from our commercial break, Dr. Mark, and we'll continue that. Yeah. Thank and you. Mark, just on one quick favor, can I have you tilt your microphone forward? Just because I was getting a little bit of a brush off there. Yeah. Okay. So we're kind of talking. Yeah. So we're just not talking directly on top of it. Absolutely. Or maybe away from your face just a little bit. That Perfect. might work. All right, here we go. Perfect. Oh, great song. Benny, I love it when you pull up all these great songs. Hey, Even welcome. though you're getting tired of my getting jiggy with it. And my That's disco. not true. You're making it up again. <laughs> oh, okay, then. I Come love my getting jiggy on. with it. Getting jiggy with it. It makes, and we were just talking about it's the good feel hormones. There you go. So, Dr. Mark, that's what I do. I, I go and I find my disco and I get my jiggy with it, and it gets me giggly and happy. And those are the uh, elevated emotions it. where I want to go and start from. During the break, we were talking on YouTube about exactly this. So, this is a great segue about sustaining one, having the awareness, figuring out what's going on, and sustaining those elevated emotions. What are those elevated emotions? You've got to look at both sides, the contrast and decide, yeah, no, I don't want to be stressed. No, I don't want to have anxiety. So what is the opposing opposite? I'm going to let you lead with that, Dr. Mark. Well, you know, it actually, if you look at um, HeartMath calls it the emotional landscape and they've got sort of, uh, um, I'm going to say it, it's a landscape that looks like this. It's got yeah. a graph and you've got your, you know, high energy and low energy, and you've also got your sort of depleting and renewing. So if we look at renewing emotions, there is high energy and low energy, right? Because on the high energy side, there's happiness, there's joy, there's exuberance, there's, you know, feeling um, happy. These are all high energy. Low energy might be peace, might be calm, might be relief. And so the idea is that you want to always be practicing the situationally appropriate emotion. So for instance, you always want to add more coherence to your life. You always want to add a little bit more pure emotion to make sure that your body's getting through it in a renewing way rather than depleting way. But, you know, I give the example of, let's say someone uh, passes away and you're grieving. Well, you still want to add some uplifting emotion, but you don't want to be happy and exuberant, high energy. You might be adding some gratitude. You might be adding some uh, calm to the situation. And so the idea is that you can start to pick out and literally choose the emotions that you'd like to feel. And so in my course, one of the last things I have people do is they do what's called a daily time schedule where they, oh, you know what, they, something's yeah. coming up, Dr. Mark, I want to, there's it. a little something comes up because there's been conversations. A lot of people, you spoke to the death, you know, if you if somebody, and there's a lot of that going on. Yes. What can we, or what can, what can you offer to teach them in those moments that, because they're really compulsive, overly compulsive about that grief and they're in it and the thick of it. And it's like, there's no way to shake them out. And, you know, we, as, as their loved ones or, or, or friends, 
you know, I can't get sick enough to help, to help you. You know, I, I, there's, what can we do to offer for them, Dr. Mark? Well, you see, my, my feeling is that you never want to skip a, an emotion that is necessary. So for instance, grief is necessary in an appropriate situation, but the idea is that you want to go through it in as gentle a way as you can. So if I'm doing breath work or I'm listening to music or I'm, you know, putting on some essential oils or whatever it is to stimulate my emotion, the purpose is not to avoid feeling it. That's right there. It's really important. It's not to avoid it, guys. You don't avoid it. You don't bury it. (laughs) It's just to go through it in a pure way. And so, you know, adding some gratitude. So if it was about someone that, you know, God forbid it passed away, I would want to be remembering things I'm grateful for about those people, grateful about my own life, things that I remember about them that give me peace, that make make me calmer, uh, as opposed to focusing on what you're missing and and all of the things, obviously, that come with with someone not being around anymore. But the idea, I think, is, is just to feel the emotion, but not let yourself go down the rabbit hole, because one emotion, one negative emotion tends to lead your thoughts in other areas, and then those create other emotions. That so, rabbit hole. Right. <laughs> so it's about not going down the rabbit hole. And if you are lucky enough to have a support system around you and people that love you, the idea is to support them and let them go through the process. The worst thing you can say is, there's nothing here to be upset about or oh. get or get over it, or let's, you know, let's, let's get you thinking about something else. Well, maybe that's not appropriate. Maybe you're there to put a hand on their shoulder, give them a hug and say, you know what, I'm here and I love you. And the idea is that you're supporting them to go through their emotion rather than to avoid their emotion. Uh, and at the same time, giving them something else to perhaps be grateful for and understand that, you know, there's still things in life that are worthy because, you know, sometimes when you're grieving for someone else, um, you're sort of forgetting the good things about life itself. And so I think and those are the caretaker, the person that's caretaking, the person who's really in deep grief. That's right. Please take a breath for yourself and remove yourself from whatever situation it is. You know, put the oxygen mask on first. Yes. And put up some boundaries. And if, if it becomes so habituated with that grief, then seek out medical help. That's okay. Yes. Yeah. Please continue, yeah. Dr. Mark. It's important yeah. because there's a lot of that kind of noodling and conversation around grief right now, understandably. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, I, I find that most of us get stuck in one of our emotions. And we, you know, I know for me, uh, there was different areas in my life that would trigger me. And so I'd get up every day and I'd have to, to counteract that trigger. I'd have to put myself into a different physiological state. And so this is where the whole, the whole idea of creating a daily process Because I have found, you know, for me, I could be extremely anxious, but it doesn't take me days or hours to get out of it. It's literally getting 100% engaged in something. You know, I could be at work in, in my office and feeling anxious, but somebody comes in and has a conversation with me, a patient I really connect with. And all of a sudden for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, I'm feeling the best I've ever felt. And then maybe they leave and you get back to your thoughts. And so the idea is you can let your thoughts go down that rabbit hole. You know, you've heard the saying idle minds are, you know, it's usually followed by some type of derogatory thing about leaving your mind idle because idle minds tend to think about things that worry them because our brains are there to protect us. And so literally our brains are scanning our external and our internal environments for what may go wrong. And we now have to correct that and say, stop looking for what everything was wrong. Stop, stop, yeah. Let's look for what's right. What's going right in this moment? What what is something that I can be really grateful for in this moment so I can move move through this? Um, And you have to make that conscious, aware, willpower choice. You have to take the bull by the horns, my loves. Yes. You have to be responsible. You have to be accountable. If you want your life to change, you have to change. And I say that with so much love because yes. I'm walking the talk just like yeah. Dr. Mark is too. I mean, we're all in it, right? The, the example I give in my book, it's happened to me numerous times over, you know, 20 or 30 years, and I'm sure it's happened to other people, but you know, I've had therapists tell me it, it can take months or years to heal or to get out of the anxious state. And for me, you know, I, I use the example of let's say you're at home and you're in a bad state, you're anxious, some people cry, some people are angry, some people are just depressed, and they're just 
on the a ball in the couch or something like that. And then the front door rings or someone knocks on the door and you're expecting a package. Well, you don't have time to do anything else other than get your stuff together, fix yourself up, you know, and answer that door. And you have to summon up enough energy in that moment. And it doesn't take you a minute or five minutes. It takes you seconds. You put yourself together and you go to the door, you open the door. Hi, how are you? And you get the package or whatever it is. And if you're honest with yourself in that moment, there's two things going on. One, you want to get rid of that person as quick as you can because you want to go back and break down. And two, you feel pretty good in that moment. You don't feel anxious. You don't feel depressed. You actually feel engaged and happy to see that person because you used enough energy that counteracted the emotional state you're in to create a new emotional state. You have to use that same intensity, that same I intention, whether someone knocks on your door or not. Right? And if you it, have to do that. It's a Gandalf on the bridge. Yes. It is. You have got to make yes. that choice. And, and when you do, it is possible. You know, there, there's some, there's a simple exercise I have people do uh, really easy, but it's not easy. If you literally smile in a mirror, you go to a mirror and you smile, the <laughs> muscles that make you smile stimulate endorphin release in the brain. And so you're literally, the muscles of smiling will change your physiology. So if you can get to a mirror and just smile, you can start to create those happy chemicals. And now you start to have more control over your emotional state and you can do some of the other things. Now, if you tell an adult to go do this, they've got ego, they've got all this stuff mixed up in it that they're just not willing to go do that. But if you tell a kid, you and I were talking uh, earlier just about how you deal with kids and the breath work. If you tell a child to go to the mirror and start smiling, they're going to make all kinds of silly faces. <laughs> they're going to do whatever it takes. Because Does that mean I'm an adult kid? <laughs> it means that you've got childlike curiosity. And when people ask me, who is my course for? That is what I say. You have to have a curiosity about life. You have to have a childlike play because we don't play enough and we don't approach things from maybe a little bit more of curiosity because you don't want to be so stressed about everything. Be curious about it. What can help me? Does this work? Does that work? Oh, that didn't work. That did nothing. I'm going to try this. And as you start to explore what works for you, you can start to have a huge tool bag of things to change your physiological state. You just have to be willing to play a little bit. Play a little bit, play a lot. I know stepping back and PS and thank you very much, Dr. Mark. Good, good, juicy information and tips and tools and audience. He's, he and we have said a lot. So I hope you're taking notes if you can. And uh, you can always go back and re listen to this. Um, it'll go, what I mean by that is it'll go back to the podcast world, SoundCloud, iTunes, all that. And also, audience, give me a five star, four star. What is it five star ratings? Uh, the, the biggest one you can do. I want lots of stars. Um, there was, I want to go back to the conversation, um, you know, the rabbit hole, the spilling, the obsessive compulsive rabbit hole and the thinking and feeling obsessive compulsive. And it's grief. Grief keeps coming up because of the conversation and those individuals being obsessive and compulsive, but also there's a chemical reaction that's happening because they are addicted again to the top of the hour, the conversation that you were alluding to that, Dr. Mark, because it is, there is that loop of thinking and feeling and thinking and feeling and thinking and feeling. And you literally have an addictive chemical reaction happening. There's, I, I just, I want to really get into that moment where they are so compulsive that they just, they're there, they're stuck. I mean, can the, the, the friend, the loved one really offer help? Or is it at that point? I mean, Help me noodle on that. Let's talk to the yeah. audience and about that. Cause that's I, important because they get spinning and you're like, yeah. eh. it's that. And that's, you know, if I go back to that, um, to that intuitive voice, which I called fight or flight Zen, there is that voice because if we usually have two voices, there's usually that voice that's saying, I'm depressed. I want to do nothing. Leave me alone. But then there's that other voice that's going, no, no, no. You're a loving person go and, you know, do the, go reach out to this person, go take a shower, go, you know, eat something you haven't eaten in four hours. Now your blood sugar levels off, go eat something. You've got to listen to do something for yourself. Because if you're in that hole, 
it's not realistic to say, I'm going to just jump right out of it. What you want to do is just say, I'm going to incrementally in five minutes from now, if I can have just change my physiology a little bit, maybe that's going to allow me to then make that phone call or go take that shower or whatever it is. And so for me, that's been the breath. If mm. it does a few things, if you focus on your breath, um, a, you're changing your physiology because you're getting the oxygen in. But B, you're focusing on the moment. You're, you're getting out of your head and into your more into your body and you're, you're feeling it and you're feeling the oxygen and you're focusing on the um, oxygen going in and out of your heart. And so as you're starting to do that, you're less thinking now and you're more feeling. And just doing that for one or two minutes can break that real uh, negative rumination in the brain at least enough to say, okay, I got to go and get, get on about my day. Half the time for me, if I ever get stuck, it's more about just I've stalled. So I've got to get doing something. And as soon as I go and get engaged in something, I'm fine. It's yeah. just a matter of sometimes you, if you start going down the rabbit hole and you let the thoughts go and then you start getting anxiety, you get caught. So you do. And have to you get caught and it's not somebody else's responsibility to fix that. You right. have to do that. Right. Yes. And Always. that's brave, beautiful work. There's no judgment in anything that myself or Dr. Mark are saying. It is big, brave work because we've been there. I know I've been down the rabbit hole and, you know, the uh, crying on the floor moments and I'm going to tantrum, although I, I like tantrums, get the energy out, right? But the refractory period, right? You can do it, feel the emotions, get it out and then find, find your homeostasis, yeah, right? I, I, th I think it's funny, the, the language, especially people who are part of this community. And, and, you know, we start to use, my wife is definitely an empath. She's a teacher and, but she's definitely an empath and she feels other people's energy. And we talk, oh. you know, she's a Dr. Joe person. And so we talk, you know, and I'll, I'll go up to her and I'll say, honey, I know this is on me. I, I've got to do the internal work, but in the moment, I'm having a real tough time doing this internally for myself. I might need some external help. Yes. Here, you know? <laughs> and totally. so, she'll, so she'll give me a hug and be like, okay, oh. I know you're not relying on it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's not funny. enabling, right. We're not talking about enabling. Yes. You have the right to vent and voice with your safe partner. That's yes. important. Yes. It's got to be a safety. That's really important. Absolutely. And say, Hey, I need a minute. You know, I know you're, I, I'm not a victim, but I need to vent this off Yes, and, and I need to regulate. And this is how I'm doing that. Can we hold yes. space? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it, it's great when you and your partner can be on that same uh, path uh, because then you can really help each other and you can make each other laugh, at, laugh at each other just a little bit because oh, you know, totally. you've got to laugh at yourself sometimes because even me, you know, someone who dealt with anxiety for, you know, 30 plus years, there was a humor in the fact that, you know, my brain, I would go through things a thousand times and it would still keep coming back to it. And, you know, it's like you learn all these things, but you still can fall down the rabbit hole. So, uh, you know, you've got to have a little humor in it. We're human. And uh, sometimes we behave like humans. So, yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. What, what is really paramount and important. And, and that's why I have the Dr. Marks on here and me. It's, it's that refractory period and bringing yourself back out of said state, right? And getting yourself in that renewed state, the elevated emotions. I mean, I, I, I remind myself all the time about elevated emotions. And if I need my own love bump, as I call them, my love bumps, I'll go to YouTube and I will literally look up babies and puppies. So babies giggling and puppies, because that yes. puppy breath and the babies laughing and you know, that belly laugh. And I'm like, yes. ah! oh, and I've gotten into this really cute habit. And I can't believe I'm sharing this, but I, I share everything. But before I go to bed ab above and beyond meditation, I get into a happy state like the Graham Norton show. They laugh so so much. There's so much humor and giddiness in there. Mm -hmm. And I watch that for maybe 10, 12 minutes. And then I go into a meditative state and go to sleep and it has totally changed. It's changed. I love it. I love it. So it, elevated emotions. You it's guys. Funny. That's, that's the way I ended my, uh, my week one out of the six week course at, at the very end, after the question and answer, I usually just have some kind of video. And on the first week, it's literally just babies laughing. Laugh. 
of 30 seconds. And it's you just, can't, you can't help but keep laughing. You, you have to laugh. You have to laugh with them. Yeah. So, and it's you know, beautiful and yeah. it changes your physiology, your biology. You That's have a right. new neural pathway and you build on the new neural pathway and the trust and, oh, it's just, it's beautiful. We've got a few more minutes here, um, Dr. Mark. Is there anything, we've got what, oh, four-ish minutes. Is there anything that you wanna kind of wrap up with? Well, I do want, I do want people to um, have the opportunity to, uh, if they want to either take the course or get the book. And so my, uh, the webpage that I put together for people is called the www dot coherence revolution dot com forward slash 2022 and if you go to that uh, web page you'll see that you can actually download the ebook for free i really just want people to get the information the book is a little bit about my journey and it talks about all of these concepts and the things that worked and the things that didn't work and it talks a little bit about heart math but it's a guide almost and it really goes well with the six week online course so if you go to that web page you can also get 50 percent off of the course, which launches, we're going to do their next one starting in April. And so you can get that for 50% off. But it's really for people who want to uh, go outside their comfort zone and try something new and really figure out what works for them. It's all about developing your own toolbox of what you can do in the moment to change your physiological state and hit this um, concept of coherence. Coherence is really the sweet spot between your spiritual, your physical, your emotional, and your mental well-being. It's that sweet spot where athletes say, you know, I was in the zone, or you may have someone that said everything just felt right. That's coherence. And you want to add that in any chance you get. And we can do that through our senses. We can do that through hearing music. We can do that through looking at nature or being in nature. We can do that from speaking with people or from, um, you know, using specific words. And so the idea is that you want to go through the course each week, do the work, do the self-inquiry, so that at the end of the six weeks, you've literally developed your life process. And so if you follow that process every day, you've got all these tools to keep your physio physiological state uplifted and renewed. And I think you'll find that it's a fun way to live. And so if this interests you in any way, check it out. You can send me an email if you have any um, if you have any questions, but I think you'll really enjoy it. And it, it can have a real profound effect on your life. Oh, and I, I say this to the audience and when I'm teaching my courses, you know, you see all these inspirational quotes. I, you know, I am happier. I, you know, the I am's, I, I, I kind of try and stay away from some of those, but where I'm going with this is ask yourself the question. When you see those inspirational quotes, do I want to be happy? Do I want to live in coherence? Do I want to have effective communication? Do I want to have joy? Do I want to have authentic love? Do I want to be abundant lifestyle? Turn those into questions. And if you're answering yes, this is a prime opportunity to get the tools to get you in a space where you can be that and being that. Yeah, that's a very well, very well, uh, very good way of putting it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Okay, Dr. Mark, we've got just a couple more minutes. I want to ask you what you're thankful for. Well, I'm really grateful for, I mean, I bring it back to very simple. I, I feel my wife, my kids, my, my, my dog, uh, are the unit that we've put together, I wake up every day and it keeps me grateful. Uh, but I'm also very grateful the fact that people are now open to hearing about these, these oh, uh, concepts. Thank you. Yeah. Because, because I am, I, I wasn't as open five years ago, 10 years ago. Now I have the freedom to say, you know what? I suffered with anxiety and I can help you. Uh, and I didn't have that freedom. At least I didn't feel that freedom maybe a decade ago. So I'm really grateful that at this point we can have these kind of talks and people are more open to it because I think we're all dealing with overwhelm and uncertainty to some degree. Oh, that's beautiful. And having the awareness and recognizing it too. And yeah, we, the, we as a collective have certainly come full circle and I'm proud of all of us for stepping in the rink to do that. And Dr. Mark, thank you very much for coming on the Gratitude Cafe. Yeah, thank today. you for having me. Thank you. Best of luck to everything that's going on. Keep that high vibration, keep shining the light because you're inspiring and being the example to, you know, your clients, your kids, yourself, your wife, to us. 
So thank you so much. And I wish you great success in all that you do. To my audience, we are going to wrap it up. Uh, if you would like a copy of the show, of course, go to claritywithsue.com and I will get you all that information. Sign up for the newsletter. We've got new events uh, online, new classes, uh, new events in person. The world's opening up. I want you to open up. I want you abundant, full of joy and self-love and confidence and vitality. And with that, uh, I'm going to end the show today. I love you guys and we'll see you next week. And until then,